Hey there all and welcome back to our channel. So in this video lecture we're going to to address again mesh and Poisson Alba but we're going to go right ahead to the point okay we're going to generate a mesh we're go not going to discuss all the previous act all the possible actions that we have in Anova we have some other videos that we talk in detail just to show you how easy it is to generate meshes and how good are those meshes okay uh, so we're going to work with this geometry uh, here you have it in your screen is the mixer mixing this mixer okay so remember i always say you have to to own your your geometry so we generate a geometry using unshape fantastic cat software but you can use any cat software it's up to you but you need to own your geometry and this file you need to support it okay we talk about the different file formats so you can use any file format we recommend a step format and talking to that community that work with STL formats. The STL format is not the best one, but even though uh, Innova will do a fantastic work, but sometimes you will see some small differences between using your cat geometry. Remember the cat geometry, you have a full parameterization. Everything is defined using norms, splines, stuff like that, B reps. Against that, STL is just a surface triangulation. So let's work. Okay, let me open bring back here uh, Innova and let me open the geometry okay so I'm going to work with two geometries okay so here I have I exported in parasolid so parasolid and then they stay out of the best format try to avoid IGES but okay you can use it as well so I will use the parasolid and you open the geometry and immediately remember that the idea is that you need to have a watertight geometry. So in this case, immediately Enova detected that is a watertight geometry. So remember the concept that we have here that you need these black lines means that everything is connected. So you see all black lines. If you have red, yellow lines, we have seen that it can be repaired or you can go ahead and mesh, but it can give you problems. So here you have your volume, okay? This means that when it detects the volume automatically, it means that everything is watertight, you can go to the meshing step. Now let's open a second geometry, okay? The STL geometry. So if we open the, the, the STL geometry, the immediately you will notice that it doesn't detect the, the volume right ahead. You need to create that volume manually. Remember that you can do it here or you can just right click but I'm not going to create it right ahead just to show you that one of the issues with this STL okay is that below this very nice node representation that we have okay because the uh, Nova does a really good job okay important that you have a surface triangulation this is what you have this is how you it is represented okay and later when we measure you are going to see that maybe you're going to have some strange behavior here so see that this triangulation look at how it's defined so this might create some problems in the machine and talking back you now to the to the open fund geometry those using snappy experts this might be an issue okay and also this triangulation they do have normal surface normal and it is very important to have those normals oriented in the same and same way okay there are many operations that are done in reference uh, to that so we have a complete video dedicated to normals and solid modeling and so on but this is an analogy that i have to those normals and this is for those doing solid modeling ray tracing and rendering so when you do th that rendering and you place you no know, a light source somewhere that surface it is illuminating according to th those normals so if those normals are pointing in one direction maybe that face will be eliminated then it just change the orientation of the normals since are not going to be illuminated no lighted so that is the analogy the simplest analogy it, and the same will happen with meshes okay so when you do the mesh when you were in the mesh some operations depends how you orient those normals so if you have one of those normals that is not oriented in the right way some meshing tools might give you problems like snappy x mesh pretty much anova is insensitive to 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 that but it's better to have everything oriented so that is something that you need to prepare as i said we are going to to work in a video you now in those lectures that we have regarding mission education okay so i just wanted to say that and also look at that when we import the geometry 
Okay, remember this features angle that we have here in the, in the surface triangulation. And Nova didn't manage to close that. Okay, so that is not an issue. So you can just right click here. You have create feature edge. So probably you will re you will recall that you have exactly something similar in the snappy edge mesh. You need it for the STL. We don't need this for the proper geometry, you have all that information. So if I use an angle of 30 there, boom, you have it there, you close it and problem solve. Okay, remember so you have that, you just play around with that and you extract more features. So you use a very low value, you will say that you are going to extract all the triangulation. So we have both geometries. I will work first with this one, okay? I remember going to, 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 to the machine is the uh, stage and to set up the, the, the simulation, you need to create the groups. Okay, I will create groups here. Okay, so all that information you have it in the geometry exactly the same with the STL. So this is very handy, very easy. Or you, don't, you don't need to do any splitting, nothing. You have all that information there. So let me do it here. So I will call this inlet. Okay, you have here the option move to group. So this is my in one. I move this one to another group, so I will call it into, and then I have this one that I will call the the outlet. Okay, so this out, and the rest are walls. If you want, you can select them or just rename here. So right click is very helpful. So just right click all over the place, and you will see many many options. So you have here. Okay, you created the local groups. Okay, now we can move. To the machine stage okay so we have the volume and to uh remind you that you can delete the volumes here you have the flatten option and then you can select everything and create volume do it manually let me erase it again and also you can do it automatically find volumes okay so sometimes if you find the volumes automatically this is using this option it might create different groups because you have different geometries it's up to you we, we we have to prepare another video about that but in the mixing elbow video we, we we show a little bit how how does it work so in this case a simple one it will work, work fine but since the starting point and over detected that so that you have the ball and everything is okay let's move to the machine stage okay so you go here click here to open the to open the uh, global parameters, local parameters. And for some reason, I like to always open that to have all the local parameters. So pretty much what you have here, local machine is the same that you have here, but I like this. Okay, this reminds me ISIN CFD. And just to remind you that the developers are you always know, the same people from ISIN CFD. So those are the similarities that you have. Okay, probably in the GUI, you, you're going to see many similarities. So at this point, the only thing that we need to do is to define the global parameters and if you want that you created groups you can apply local parameters or you can go back to the topology down to the, the topology you go back to geometry and you can select an edge and apply a meshing parameter in that edge or you can select also a face okay that is not in a group and apply also meshing parameters there i'm not going to do it you can play in your on your own with that but I will go and use global parameters. Uh, something important to you know, but you have three different meshing methods. So you have the topology based, the best method, okay? Then you have octree based method. This is very similar to what is done in the Snappy X mesh. I don't recommend this method. I created a lot of the method, but this is a little bit better from what you have in the Snappy, but I don't like the method. And then you have the string wrap method, okay? So this one is used to for, for to deal when dealing with dirty geometry so we're going to work with this geometry with a hole and you're going to see that concept okay but for the moment let's work here only with with this geometry okay the topology based method the good method so let's define the global parameter so i know my geometry i know that 0 0.1 it is a good choice. Then the minimum size is 0 0.1 is another good choice. This refinement number defines the refinement due to curvature. So if I choose a large number, so it, uh, it will add a lot of refinement where you have where you have curvature. So usually I like to use 18. So so this is equivalent no 360 divided 18, 20 degrees. Okay, so every 20 degrees put a triangle. If you want more, you can put 36 every 20 degrees and so on okay but 18 
it is a good choice uh i want to generate only triangles i want to force to to have a triangulation but if you don't select this one where and i will detect that we can put quads it will add quads just to improve the quality of the mesh or to reduce your cell count for the moment let's force it and i want to create the surface mesh only so remember the method used in the nova is on in this specific you know uh, methodology the topology base it is a surface to volume first you create the surface then the boundary layer then you create the volume mesh so that's our first step so we're going to work like this surface mesh i would click here surface mesh if i'm happy with that surface mesh i will move to the inflation that is here and then i move here to create my volume mesh i like to do it manually i have i mentioned already this workflow that you do your surface mesh you save it then move to to, to the boundary layer inflation you save it in this case it's very fast so there's no need to save it but sometimes the surface mesh can be time consuming two three five ten minutes okay so you save it just to save that time and you you, you do your, your restart so let me click here now that you i set the the parameters so remember i only set global parameters i didn't define any local parameters but it's one you can define it here so click and there you go you have a very nice mesh there and this is it so we have our surface mesh i'm happy with this i didn't add as i say i didn't add any local parameter but it's one you can add that no problem on that so the next step is to do the boundary layer so to do the boundary layer is you if, if you click this here or if i click here it will give you an error because i haven't defined any parameters so to define the boundary layer you need to enable that here so this is the wall i will go here use volume so you enable and then i want just to create let's say three layers and i don't i'm not going to give any options here meaning that Enova will grow the boundary layer, okay, using a 20% of the dimension of the surface, okay, so is this surface here, is a, let's say one, the layer next, okay, the inflation will be 0 0.2, okay, 20%, or as you know your height, you can put it here, there is no problem, so if you don't put anything, I think this is why, okay, to do a natural transition, and um, that's it, you enable that, you can enable that for different surfaces. I just want the, the volume and let me click and off you go. A nice bonded layer, you already see it here, growing from the wall, three layers. And I have to say that the boundary layer, you always get a good boundary layer. Okay, no need for trial and error or nothing. The boundary layer, the global parameter. So these are the global parameters for mesh size. Okay, then these are the global parameters for the topolo uh, topological methods. Okay, so I didn't touch anything here. As you go to the bottom, you have here the global parameters for the boundary layer. Also, no need to adjust anything. Those are okay, but you can play with that. So we can inspect now the boundary layer here. So I put, let me put a couple in there. And there you go, a very nice boundary layer, perfect. Okay, bam, bam, bam. and you said about the problems that you have when you have very fine boundary layers is this section and you will recall also snappy will have something similar but it's snappy have like a gazillion auctions and it doesn't do a good job here it's perfect but sometimes very fine here's what you're going to have large orthogonality that you can measure here so you click in the o you have it there so very low no orthogonality so this is for open phone for those using open phone this is the most critical one is you are using commercial software fluent and starts the same pretty much those software they digest anything that put there but in that case it's better to control mesh quality and this value have to be more than 10 to the uh, 0.001 to, to to talk about a good mesh okay so it's something similar to what is done in fluent or search to see uh, so that's it we have the boundary layer and the next step is to create our tetra mesh i click there i will have tetra mesh so here we have tetra meshes poly meshes and if you use this method you are going to have those exadominant 
measures I don't recommend that. This is another video that we're going to show you that here we focus just in the topology base. At this point we have our volume mesh there and there you go, a very nice mesh. You might look at this uh, structure and you will see that those tetra or pyramids in this case are kind of, they have this lattice structure there, very well aligned with the flow, with your reference system, okay? I really like that that option, but if you will, don't want to have that, if you want to use the more anisotropic distribution, like in a delanoid triangulation, just go in the global parameters and disable this option, lattice for densities, okay? So let's do it. Let me repeat, but now let me go and do everything in a single step, okay? I don't want to do everything, so I will click here. Maybe it will give me an error or no. So sometimes it will tell you that you have negative volumes. I don't know, if you have that, just go back to geometry and recompute the volume, okay? Just click, click again here, find volumes, and that's all. It will fit, it will fit that, that, that issue. Sometimes it happens. In this case, it didn't happen. So now I'm, I think I have mesh there. I put my cut line there and see that you have that anisotropic distribution. So it's up to you to pick out that one. I prefer the other one. For the moment, I will stick to this one. So we have our mesh. Let's measure orthogonality and see that we have 63. Okay, it's still a perfect mesh. And then we go, if you are happy with this, you can use Tetra, okay? I think Tetra are the best elements in the sense that they adapt very easily to the most complicated geometries. And actually I use Tetra when I have very complicated geometries. It's the only way to resolve all the features. Then Xs, they don't adapt very well and that is the problem. And then we have Poly that they adapt very well, okay, but the issue sometimes is that the quality is worse than in Tetra. So it is a compromise. Let's see what happens. So if you are happy with this one, you can go ahead and work with this one. If you are not happy with this one, you want to use the poly, we go to the next step. So we go here and the idea of creating those polys is that it is a dual of that of this Tetra mesh. We have the Tetra or the pyramids, whatever you have there, and it's going to be converted into a poly. So enable this one. Be sure also to leave this one enable because when you do the, the poly, also will try to adjust to modify a little bit the boundary layer to get something better. Okay, so try to have that enable that. And let me click there and it's going to to do a, again the, 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 the volume mesh but also it's modifying that boundary layer. The step to do that conversion, large measures, it can be a little bit time consuming. In this case, I hope it's going to be fast. So if you right click here, also remember you, 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 you right click rightly anywhere you have many options, you click there specific in this tab. You have these messages, you can bring this window and here you have some messages, what is happening. So you can have an idea that it is doing something. Okay, and there you go. We have the mesh, everything, and if I put there my cut plane, this is what we have, a poly mesh. Personally speaking, I think in the final volume method, it is the best cell type. It reduces the cell count of the tetra mesh, so you said it's a factor two to six, and also it computes, computes better Grading. But that is up to you to, to find that. But I think we're going to work a lot and we have you know, in those mesh education videos just to talk about all that. But at, in the end of the day, there is no final element. It's up to you. you know, there is no definite or best element. It's up to you. Personally speaking, I like to, to use this. And we can click here on orthogonality to check the orthogonality. And this is a one of those cases at layers that when you do the poly, you get better quality. So remember that with the Tetra, we, we have a quality sensor about 60 or 61, don't recall it, now 50. So even it can happen that poly can improve your measures. And if you, if you go back to the number of cells, you will see that you have less cells there. So here we have 63,000. Uh, 63, Probably the poly will be, I don't recall what was, but that, okay, let's do it. Uh, let's go back and let's do everything. But probably maybe it will be like 200,000 or 300,000. So bam, 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 I disabled poly and let me click there and off. 
you go. So you see how here in messages you, you, you have there's some little messages what is happening. Okay, so as you see, it's very fast. And if you click in O orthogonality, you get maximum orthogonality, but also you, you have the cell count. See that you have okay, more than 200 cells. And so it's a factor of like four or five, four, closer to four, clearly. And this is it. This is uh, how you create meshes, very easy. Now what I want to show you is that what might happen when you use dirty geometry. STL, that is the, the STL is when it's something dirty through these scans. Is your is you own your geometry as I say, so you have your cat. There is no reason to, to to save that in STL. But just to show you what might happen with with an STL. So everything is closed. So in theory, we have the same geometry as the previous one. I'm not going to create the groups. I don't need it. I would save that instead. But you need to create the volume. Okay. So you click there, create volume, or you can go in geometry hit this key, uh, this icon and that's all. We have the volume, we can move to the mesh stage. I would use the same parameter. So just to compare apples with apples. Or... And if I were to recall, I put here 18, I'm forcing everything to triangles. I disable this and that's it. Let me bring also local options. I didn't put anything local. Uh, I will recall if I will recall. Well, I'm not going to add the boundary layer as well. Or if you want, you can enable no issue in that. And now I just interested in the surface mesh just to show you what might happen when you have those triangulations. And I generate it. And look at what is happening. So exactly the same, geomet uh, same geometry, same parameters. And clearly you can see that the mesh in Nova is forcing you to try to follow some topology that you have in your geometry. And if you recall, let me open it again here. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. And look at the geometry. Now it's, it's here, geometry. So see that you have this triangle is there, probably some normals, a little bit messy. So that is what it's trying to do, to follow, follow that. So in sometimes that can be an issue that you can see in your geometry. And, and we're going to watch some videos just to show you that it's very important if you are doing solid, uh, solid modeling, like Blender, stuff like that. Normals are in, very important. Rendering is extremely important, but in CFD it's also important depending on the method and the software that you are using. In this case, Snap is very, very sensitive to that. So to solve that problem, it's not a big deal. So for instance, I know that here is trying to, 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 to play with the curvature. Okay. Bam, bam, bam. So what I can do here is just have a uniform value. I'm putting a, a uniform value that it will solve that problem. I have uniform cells or so something like that. It will be exactly equivalent to this, to this mesh. Uh, sorry, it's this one. Exactly equivalent. So see that what is what's happening is that it was trying to add curvature refinement there because it was measuring due to that triangulation to due to this triangulation that there was a lot of curvature there. It might be some precision error, whatever, but it's something that it will detect that software and problem solve. That's all. Then to, to add boundary layers and everything, it is exactly the same, the rest. So this is how we mesh. And in other words, we went right ahead to the point, to, to the hole, okay, to the point, and quite easy. Points to, to, to stress here on your geometry, use a good geometry. Even if you are using a good software, STLs can give you problems. From this point on, if you want to do your open phone setup, that will be another video. Just click there, set up everything. Just quite easy. So in a next video, we're going to work with this button here. So this is the string wrap method. That is something that you use only when you have dirty geometry. So in this case, I'm going to manipulate this one. I will show you how to do that, but I think also we did it. I'm going to create a hole in the geometry and the string wrap is going to kind of ignore that hole according to tolerances and so on. And we're going to see how it works. It's similar to something very similar to, to a snappy, the concept, but not exactly the same. And it's way much better. The boundary layer always work. And then also I'm going to show you this method, the closest to, to snappy. I don't like it. I don't recommend it. Also, it's a little bit experimental here 
for the day of the recording, but probably soon will be coming in full production. So that's all. Okay, I think. Uh, what else also about sh always check your quality. You have all the metrics here. The most important is you are working with open phone is orthogonality. Then you have skewness, the minimum distance, the aspect ratio, volume and quality that if you are using commercial software product, commercial software is better to look at, at this, this metrics. So we're talking about Fluent or Star CCM. So for the, po for the moment, this is all. I hope you are getting a good grid in an hour. And we're going to keep working on other videos, more advanced stuff. So stay tuned and enjoy. Bye.